Good evening, guys. Chris Cowan here from the Booth Conference Hotel of Asia, Fremont, California. Um, my student, Jason Ellis, suggested I should content, go ahead and continue my uh, rooftop reviews. So I'm going to go ahead and do that every once in a while. Um, as you can see tonight, I'm out in the dark. Um, got my daughter's little light here. Um, got to give us to illuminate a little bit here because it's really dark. It's kind of nice. I can actually hear the bats flying over. <laughs> um, it's nice during the day as you can see how we have the crows, which is our dojo, to, which is our dojo logo and uh, character uh, and uh, our mascot, I should say. The crows kind of guard my house along the wires in the front. It's interesting. They seem to congregate right right, right on our rooftops and right in front of our house as like guardians. It's really nice. And then at night, you can actually hear the bats flying over, like I said. Um, you may see one fly past me, you know, kind of scary. Um, but, eh, that's okay. Um, what I want to do tonight, uh, in terms of review, I pulled out some tools uh, to kind of look at and, and go through and kind of give a little brief summary on uh, use and uh, what they are. Okay. So, let's go with this out. So, we're going to bring it up. Uh, my wife's, one of my wife's gun cases. Pulling that around here. Okay. I'm going to use that to carry everything here. All right. So, we're going to open this up. Let's see what we got. Okay. All right. Let's get some tools here. So, we got some kunai. Let me back up so you can see these. Yeah. So, got some kunai here. There's one over there. One there. We've got one that's. We'll get into the, that later. Uh, some more samples. We'll show these later. And we got another sample. Well, actually, this one's my live one. Uh, let me get that out. Set that over there. Just here. Here, and there, and there. So we're going to go ahead and close this up. So as you can see here, we have many tools here. Um, they're saying these uh, these tools are tools that are used in uh, ninjutsu. Um, uh, so these some of these tools are small, concealable. And that's just how you know some are farming implements some are toys you know that can be seen as toys and harmless it just depends on how they're used um, we'll start over here on, on my right and work our way across okay so first thing we have is a mizu tempo so this is a, a water gun okay uh, it was interesting when we were in the Japan we were in Nikko we went to uh, uh, Edo Wonderland and it was interesting because we saw these uh, there with uh, some pinwheels and um, or windmills. I can't remember what those things are called, but um, I think it's pinwheels. Um, and they had these there for kids to play with. So in Japan, kids could use these as squirt guns. So you can see here, and this is usually used in uh, Saito no Jitsu, so the water skates in uh, Dakeru. Okay, you see it's a spongy cloth with a. a or a spongy uh, like membrane here with a, a cotton around it and then a string tied around it on a bamboo skewer and bamboo handle here and then here of course the bamboo's hollow but you have a small hole here so once you put it in you can go here by pressure and squirt somebody with this you know the idea here uh, in terms of switching the two is the idea of either using poisonous liquids or flammable liquids you know um, in some cases uh Shinobi would have abrasive material on, on, on their uh, it? Shinobi Shizuku, their uh, ninja outfit or uniform. And those rough surfaces could be used to strike a match. So imagine something like this being filled with, with flammable liquids, pushed and sprayed on somebody, and then throw a match right after. You know what happens, okay? Or if you're just trying to cause some sort of thing like that. In terms of the poisonous liquids, you can also irritants into the eyes, pepper, glass, chili powder, that kind of stuff. It's like we would normally see with Mitsubishi, okay? Um, so like I said, this is a small one. I built ones larger than this. Um, so this one's nice because you can have it small, compact, be carried in a little bag, 
on the side. Um, the way I like to use this because I like to have a hand free. My right hand might be free, and I, once this is pulled out, it's filled with liquid or whatever it is, I could put it against my stomach, and I would push it this way, and then I could just dispose of it, and then continue and engage the uh, threat that way. So this would be, you think about it, this would be like a, an old version of pepper spray. That's a way of looking at it. Uh, as we get down further, look at some other tools. Uh, here, I made a video on this. So, chisai kasarigama. So it means like a small kasarigama, chain and sickle, okay? So this is nice because this, these individual pieces would look like farming tools. That's all it would be. So you would have a comma for gardening, cutting down the rice, okay? Just a regular string, a piece of cloth, and inside this piece of cloth, easy thing to find, look around anywhere on the ground, a rock. So now I have a small sarigama if I need to fight with or, you know, can use that, okay? And you have your comma there, boom, use it, small, okay? Really nice. And then if I need to get rid of it, just untie it, use the string to tie, tie stick inside my kimono, cloth I can use to my face, the rock, just throw the rock away. Sorry, I'm just sticking in my belt. And I'm just a lonely farmer. Okay? Moving on. Um, we have Shuko. So these are courtesy of a friend of mine. Um, so these, custom made, beautiful, beautiful workmanship. Um, what I like about these is the claws themselves are long, like eagle's talons. You can see it. Okay? Um, and the band is a lot thicker. We've all had those old pair, those pair that we see online. We used to buy at the martial arts stores with a cheap band that was real thin. No, you want a band that's thick. This should be to where you shouldn't be able to make a full fist because it should be to where you can make a shinkake to strike with. You know, it was you couldn't make a, a full fist because you would actually, your hands would be getting into these claws. And you want it bigger also because when you apply pressure when you're climbing, this will be digging into the back of your hand. So you want it so that it it's a wider band. Okay. You got leather on the palms. Support if if you're catching swords. Okay. And a metal ring. Okay. These can usually be uh, hung uh, on your shinobi katana itself, on your waistband if you need to. Okay. That's what's nice about these. Okay. Now, going down lower here, if you look, um, you see I have my Waraji on. Um, you'll see on the bottom, I actually glued foam on the bottom of mine so they last longer and they're more comfortable. Um, a few years ago for Halloween, I, I wore all my, uh, my Yoroi, my samurai armor, and I wore these for Halloween. I didn't have the foam in them and my feet were killing me after walking around the neighborhood with the kids. It was funny because I walked around with the head in my hand too while I was wearing my armor. It was kind of freaking some people out. But people saw it was with kids and it was a fake head and they were like, oh, it's okay. Um, but uh, down here, I have on my feet, you can see and you just heard them. Oh, come closer, there's the camera here, you can see. So cool. Okay. So, I remember years ago, uh, I made a comment on uh, Facebook and, and, uh, uh, and it was funny because uh, Chris Cabanero corrected me. Thank you, Chris, by the way. Um, but what it was was, I, I'm old school. So we remember, the, we remember back in the day when uh, we used to train, uh, you know, in Ohio, and the terms that we heard back then were ashiko. So like, let you know, like, <laughs> so that's the term that we that I grew up with was ashiko, and that's the term I used. And Chris corrected me, said no, soko. And uh, so you hear different terms and it's interesting because people that from back in the day refer to it as ashiko but there was people were corrected and it is soko so soko on the feet okay so usually these weren't used on concrete or on rocks on the ground hard they were used in dirt okay because you think about how if you're doing something you're trying to walk like i'm on my roof right now and, uh, it's horrible to walk in okay um, but on a on a soft surface it's great Provides great traction. This is also good if you're walking on ice. You need traction in ice itself. Okay. Um, 
ways these are used, mainly there's two types of two ways that this is used. The sokol. So sokol can be used uh, when you are when you are engaged in combat, when you're fighting, uh, using a taijutsu. Maybe think about doing a kunokata. You do your get, you know, you do your get on but I, you bring your hand up, hey, you got a shuko on this hand, hey, strike with that shuko to the face, but at the same time, that right leg comes up, kicks, and instead of just pushing him back, it kicks and drags down. So that kick may go to borin or sugetsu, but then the claws drag down. You can imagine the injuries on that, it's very, it's not going to be pretty. Um, or uh, there's a waza that's in koturu, where the idea is, you're, you're, I forgot what the, um, which was it was, but you actually, you actually, uh, step on the person's foot. <laughs> you know, it's like, and so it doesn't, it doesn't feel too good. It doesn't feel too good. So imagine stomping on someone's foot with these on. Okay. Uh, the other way that they're used, which, um, I tried it and it didn't work well for me without it really hurting a lot. Um, and that might just been fault on my part. Uh, was climbing uh, trees and climbing uh, I should say climbing trees is very difficult climbing a rock face was easier <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds strange but it was easier um, so with the rock face it would actually I could actually wedge in and lock it in and those would get in place uh, when it came to trees now if it's a tree that's a narrow tree uh, say about I don't know like this the size here let's say about 12 inches um, round, it, it would be easy to do with the feet because then you could sit with the feet like this and the feet would clench on the tree and the hands could be here on the tree and you could go up and the feet would go up. Um, I remember uh, having an old photo of uh, uh, Bud Malstrom when he is doing some rope climbing and you see his feet like this, perched like this. It's really cool because he's just there, you know, and at one point uh, I have one of the photos where he's he goes and he stands up while he's on the rope and his hands are free. He's reaching in his pocket to grab something. It was really cool. I love that picture. But that was a great photo, by the way, from back in the day. Um, but these two working together are very, very brutal. Um, don't don't sugarcoat it. It's it's this art is a violent art in terms of what you can do to people, but it's how we go about using it. And, our, and having a good heart. Uh, so we don't use it for bad things, but it is very brutal. It was a very brutal time um, during like the uh, uh, Sengoku period. Um, so keep, just keep that in mind, that's all. Okay, so Shuko and Soko. Okay, here's off here. Let me get a little bit too close here. So, next, we got here, Kunai. Okay, I've got different types here, okay? So, we're gonna look at, uh, this is one that was made, uh, I can't remember the year we did kunai in Bujinkan, uh, but this was made by one of my students. He, uh, he actually worked at Taps Plastics in Mountain View. And uh, when it came down to like, hey, wait, training weapons? Oh, I can make those out of, out, of, out, of, out of like excess plastic. And this is one of his, I actually have two, the other one is it wrapped, handles it wrapped. But this is a perfect, Perfect one. I love using this one just because of the wide uh, front of it, you know. Um, not so much for throwing, but you can throw this, but you know, but it, oh, this was really good. Okay, so uh, this was actually a tool, a trenching tool, so you could dig. Say you're, you're at, a, at a wall or something, like a wooden fence, and you could dig in to get underneath it, you know. So it's a digging tool, that's what this was used for. Um, another way this was used um, was if you're climbing a rock face, let's say you don't have shuko, you could take your kunai and slide it into the rock, in between the rocks, and use it as a step to go, to go up to the next one. What's nice about this is because the kunai, yeah, it's on with string on them. You'll see my, my, my live one here. Uh, once you go, let's say you, you have, let's say you put strings on your kunai. Once you put that in, use it as a foot like a step to go up to you know up, put another one in you can use that to help pull you up and as you go you can actually pull that string that kunai will come out you can pull it back up stick it somewhere else and you can bring them with you as you go um, so you can use two kunai like this to climb 
um, and you can use it to stick it into as a, as a step for your foot, okay? Uh, this one, like I said, I love this one because of the big flat sides on it. Um, Silk has used this in a way to, to smack people. I've used it also. Uh, this is good for uh, forearms, uh, legs. When you get somebody, like someone goes to kick it, bam, and that side, man. Woo, man, it's good, all right? Uh, this is a, another one. I had two of these. Um, this was given to me by uh, one of our old students, Dave Davis. Um, and I lost the other one. I don't know what happened to it. I either lost it or I broke it. I'm not sure. But I still have one from back in the day. Uh, this one is from like maybe, God, 2000. No, like 2000. This is from like 2000. I'm surprised we haven't broken it. It's, you know. So this is more of the ones like we saw at Hambu back in the day. Um, really nice too. And again, it looks just, it's a tool. That's all it was used for. But you see how it can be used. Um, and, the, and what's nice about these, you might carry multiple ones and they were disposable. You can take it, boom, throw one at that guy, throw one at that guy. If you didn't have a bow shirt, that's what you could use these for, okay? Now here we have the one that we've seen in Naruto, okay? So this is more like, yeah, it's more for like cartoons and TV. But don't get me wrong, this thing is, you know, and this one, this one is actually a, a plastic one. I got a Naruto costume for Halloween and they get, they say I should give you kunai and, Simbon and you know, Shuriken and things like that. And um, I kept this one in, uh, I bring it into the dojo. I, I was like, man, this is nice. I'll bring it in the dojo. So this hangs in the dojo and we use it in the dojo sometimes. But um, this right here, like I said, this is more for television um, for the anime series. Um, but it still would be very effective. You know, um, I actually showed this to some uh, co workers uh, outside of work. We were talking, and I showed him. I showed it to him. New, they thought it was real, and I'm like, no, 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 dude, this thing's plastic. But I showed him how, even though it's plastic, how it could be used, and how it would still be effective, you know. And even a, a live version of this being thrown at you, it would do some damage. Okay, so this kunai from Naruto. Okay, so moving on. So now we get into. Uh, actually, let me show you my uh, my live one here. So this is my live one here. It's uh, courtesy of a friend of mine. Who also had the, who made the shuko for me? So this kunai here has the saw blades on it. Okay, um, this might have a different name because I, there is a saw that is in the Bansi Shukai that is used to saw through a flat wall, and this could actually be. And that one's normally larger. It's almost like big, like this, like a wide air area. Imagine with the saw blades on it. And so what it, it's made to do is so that this, this rounded edge can go along the wall. And a lot of times people like to think, oh, I'll cut a square in the wall to go through. No, you cut a triangle. It's the fastest way. And um, you're minimizing the amount of cuts you have to make. But let's say I, I want to cut, I have a wall in front of me and I want to cut that wall, but there's a hole in it. I can't, ugh, you know. So what I do is I go like this because that round edge, I go like this. And once it gets big enough to where I can get this in, then I can go here and then I could cut across, cut across. Then I would do another line going this way, cut this way, boom. And I would get in, cut there, cut here. I cut a triangle. And then I pull that triangle out. I don't want to push it in, because if I push it in, it might fall in and awaken somebody. So I would pull it out, okay? Um, but that's how that would be used in terms of cutting. In terms of, of combat, using it with my taijutsu, this would be like the destruction sword in Kodakure, the uh, can't remember the word in Japanese, but the sword with the with the saw blades on it. So this, imagine, with your taijutsu, in terms of, you know, someone comes in, whoa, boom, there's that you get that forearm, you know, and they come in again, whoa, boom, and as you go, maybe that other arm comes, they come with a left a left punch, you're like whoa, and you kind of hide, and you bring your arm over the top, and look, you just put your hand right here, and it goes right across, and you're done. And then you just feed it this way and run to it. Okay. So you can see on this one, I've wrapped the handle and also attached paracord and a ring on the end. So the ring is, is there if I need to, if I want to make sure I don't lose it. Okay. So I can put through this way like this, attach it to my hand. So I never lose my tool. But also like this, this string I could use for to entangle somebody, to trap somebody. Um, you know, if. Now, I'm not going to do like you've seen, I think people have done this, and it was like you, you see in the, out of a, 
old uh, Chinese kung fu movies, they use like the rope dart. Yeah, I guess you could use it like a rope dart. You know, most likely I probably wouldn't, but I can't. You could throw it and then pull it back and retrieve it. You know, um, you just gotta be aware when it comes back, it doesn't do this. Most of the time it's gonna come back this way, but you don't want it to come back like this. So be aware of that, okay? So, this is a kunai, my live one. So this was, works really, really well. Um, okay. uh, going through right here. Now these, these right here are more modern versions of kunai. These are a set of throwing knives, um, and they're based on the kunai design. So let's look at this one by Sog, okay? This is a set of three here, you can see. Look at that. So this, I guess these look more similar to this one in a way, but just not as big. Um, they've been cut out the middle, so that the weight is, it's balanced, I, I imagine. Oh yeah, perfectly balanced, there it is, right? So these can be used the same way. These are basically kunai. Just very, you know, and you can use the sides to slap, you can use the blade to cut, thrust, everything. Same, okay? Like I said, set of three. You know, these were a gift, okay? It's funny, most of my uh, tools um, uh, are, were gifts from friends or students or family. Okay, so I saw it. So here's another set. This one is by Kershaw. So these, another set here, okay. Oh, look at that, look at that. Now this, now this one looks more like a Naruto type with the hole cut in there, you know, you can see, okay. So I could put my pinky through there if I need to, if I wanna reverse grip, I can put my index finger through there and hold it. See, works really well, you know. Reminds me of uh, Karambe. It's another one of my knives that I use. It's not Bujintan, but it's one of my knives I use in class a lot because um, I like the effectiveness of that. But this would, again, this would be a throwing knife here. You know, let's check the balance on this one. Let's see what the balance is on it. Oh, right in the middle. Again, right in the middle. Okay. So, a set of three, you know, throw. And you should be able to throw these in succession. Boom, boom, boom. Um, another thing is also be able to throw left-handed and right-handed. Um, I don't care if you are left-handed or right-handed, learn to use your other side. Um, you may come under under uh, a situation or deal with a situation where you, you're injured. If you're, if you're right-handed and your right side is injured, you may have to use your left, you know? Um, I remember several times in the past, uh, other instructors would tell me when it came to uh, Beacon Jitsu, where I would use, like, if, like, I would do something where I'm using the like traditional uh, katana or uh, shinobi katana, like tool, tachi. I would use it like traditional, but then every once in a while I would do something and I would switch hands and it would throw the other person off. And they're kind of like, "What the heck did you do? How'd you do that? What? What, what? what was that?" And I just switched hands and they didn't know it to the last minute, or they didn't know it till after I they I explained it to them. Um, and then it was interesting because when I was in Japan. Uh, we were in uh, the Budokan in Ayase a while back, like years ago. I remember Soke was, um, he was in Haso no Kamae. And uh, somebody came to either thrust, or came to ski, or it was cut from Dajuran for Karatakawari, cut the head. And Soke was like this, and when the person came in, he shuffled a little bit to his left, and then dropped the blade down on the person's arm. And so as they came to cut, it came down on their uh, right forearm. And people didn't realize what he had did. They thought he just shifted and came down. No, he shifted and when he came down, he switched hands. And now his left hand and left foot were in the front. And then he just ran through. So, and it basically, it came down right on the forearm, made the, made the uke's forearm drop, and it was a straight line to the person's sternum. And he just walked in with the sword, do, 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 do. you know. He also did it again where he did the same thing from Hasso, he dropped, switched the left hand, and then it was the weirdest thing. Once he did that, he flicked the blade like this and it made the person smack their other forearm. So it made, it made their, their right hand got hit and then it smacked the side of his blade, smacked the other, the Uke's forearm, they dropped their blade and he just laid it on the neck. And then of course, you know, as 
so okay would say understand and everyone was like what and it was it was a cool thing because it was like you're always being told in Japanese martial arts right hand right hand right hand you know um, left hand's bad left hand's bad nah you gotta be able to use both you gotta be able to use both especially when your life is on the line you can't let rules get in the way of survival um, in terms of a uh, combat situation I understand rules of engagement but it's like uh, if someone broke into if there was a home invasion someone broke into my house uh, you know um, they wouldn't get very far because Kusanagi would get them um, and y'all know Kusanagi right um, but let's say they got past Kusanagi and they had to get to me or they're going after after my wife and children in my home there would be no rules I would do whatever it takes to protect my family and they are in my domain and like I said I would do whatever it takes to protect my family um, you have to take that thought press of that mindset and be able to apply it to anything basically what it boils down to is be able to adapt to any situation you know uh, be able to deal with a stressful situation be able to change in that situation like I said adapt this is key okay um, like I said just want to share with everybody uh, some tools so this is a uh, another rooftop review you know so just want to say uh, about that Keep training, don't stop. Even with this coronavirus, man. Oh God, it's driving me nuts. Um, I need to get my dojo back open. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what we do. Probably train outside in the front yard. Um, go old school. Let's get dirty, down and dirty. Like I did the other day. I went to the park, got dirty. It was great. Ripped my gi. You know the gi now. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's about it. That's about it. So, everybody, have a good night. Okay. So, ooh, what's that? Ooh, a little fun here. So, when in doubt, be able to adapt.